Hello everyone, in the lecture series of application of thermodynamics, this is the lecture number 9 and today's topic is Nernst distribution law. As you have seen in the last lecture number 8 that the criteria of a solution to behave ideally, one of them was that the solution would obey the Nernst distribution law. So what is that Nernst distribution law? Let us see. This law states that the concentration of a solute distributed between two phases at equilibrium at a constant temperature bears a fixed ratio. That means what? We have two solvents or two liquids which are immiscible with each other. But there is a common solute which is soluble in both. And when it dissolves in both the phases, then its concentration ratio is same at a particular temperature. So, if a substance is present in two immiscible liquid phases denoted by suffix 1 and 2, then at equilibrium mu1 equals to mu2. What is mu1 and mu2? Mu1 is the chemical potential of the solute within the solvent number 1, that is the solution number 1 and mu2 is the chemical potential of solution number 2 that is the chemical potential of the solute within the solvent number 2 and mu1 and mu2 has their respective expressions in terms of their activities a1 and a2 if a1 is the activity of the solution 1 that is the activity of the solute within solution 1 and a2 is the activity of the solute within solvent 2 that means within the solution 2 after having dissolved in the solvent it becomes a solution so within the solution the activity of uh, the solute in second solution it is a2 then with respect to a1 and a2 they can be uh, also expressed in terms of the uh, standard chemical potential if the standard chemical potential of solution 1 is mu1 0 and standard chemical potential uh, in sol uh, solution 2 is mu2 0 and these are the constant terms so their respective expressions should be instead of mu1 you can write mu1 0 plus rtl in a1 instead of mu2 you can write here mu2 0 plus rtl in a2 okay now let's rearrange this equation so let the log let take the logarithmic terms in the right left hand side and the other terms in the right hand side so you find that mu2 0 minus mu1 0 so the both of them are constants so their difference is also a constant and if you eliminate this negative this minus sign uh, in uh, with respect to a division sign then the logarithmic terms can be merged as rt ln a1 by a2 and this is also a constant say this is k if the temperature is kept constant now let's proceed further uh, then take rt in the right hand side in the denominator then it becomes ln a1 by a2 equals to some constant by rt and or if you uh, eliminate this logarithmic terms then it goes to the uh, the right hand side go to the goes to the power of the exponential so a1 by a2 becomes e to the power constant by rt so this is also yet another constant if the temperature is constant and this is denoted as kd so at constant temperature we have a1 by a2 equals to kd which is a constant now in case of a dilute solution what happens the activity terms can also be replaced by the concentration terms and if the respective concentrations of the two solutions are C1 and C2, then it can be said that C1 by C2 is also a constant and which is also denoted as Kd, which is known as the partition coefficient or the distribution coefficient. So, we have a new term Kd, which is very important in chemistry practicals particularly. This Kd is known as the partition coefficient or the distribution coefficient of the solute distributed between two immiscible solvents at a given temperature. As for example, two immiscible solvents means water and ether, water and carbon tetrachloride, water and chloroform, these are immiscible liquids. What is the common solute which is uh, which is soluble in both? Iodine, I2, is uh, such, a, uh, such a substance which dissolves in both. So in those cases, this distribution law is the Nernst distribution law and if this Nernst distribution law is obeyed by them, then this, they are following one of the criteria of uh, behaving like an ideal solution. Now this distribution law has some limitations. These limitations are if this solute gets either associated or dissociated, then this distribution law is not followed properly. And this dissociation or association may take place in both the phases or in any one of the phases. So let's see how does it happen. 
if it dissociates in any one of the phases then this situation or this situation takes place situation 1 and situation 3 or if it dissociates the solute dissociates in both the phases then this situation 2 in, in between this one takes place and what is the difference between situation 1 and situation 3 uh, in situation 1 you find that uh, the solute dissociates into two different species on the other hand the uh, solute in the phase, uh, solute in the uh, phase where it is getting dissociated it dissociates into the same species if it dissociates into two same species then it is 2x prime let's consider a solute x which dissociates in solvent a without any change and dissociates in solvent b into two species two different species y and z that means we are considering here the situation one now let's assume that ca is the concentration of the solute in solvent a and cb is the total concentration in solvent b that means the dissociated form as well as the undissociated form the concentration of both the forms it is total concentration which is denoted as cb now some part of cb has got dissociated and some part remain undissociated if the degree of dissociation is alpha then 1 minus alpha is the undissociated part and alpha is the dissociated part so if cb is the overall concentration then the 1 minus alpha fraction remains undissociated this is the part which remains undissociated and if Mm, alpha is the degree of dissociation then cb into alpha should be the concentration of both y and z okay so if alpha is the degree of dissociation of solute x within solvent b then the equilibrium concentrations of the species in solvent b may be given as this equation in such case the ratio of the concentrations of the undissociated species in the two solvents that means ca by cb into 1 minus alpha because we are here we have here to uh, the concentration of x only not y and z the so concentration of x in solvent a is a ca while concentration of x in solvent b is instead of cb it is cb into 1 minus alpha so kd should be now equals to ca by cb into 1 minus alpha so this is the modified form of the uh, case where dissociation takes place in only one phase into two different species Similarly, if the solute dissociation dissociates in both the solvents, then degree of dissociation should be two types of degree, degree of dissociations, alpha A and alpha B. Some alpha A portion is dissociated within the solvent A and alpha B portion dissociates within the solvent B. Then the undissociated concentration should be CA into 1 minus alpha and the undissociated constant should be CB into 1 minus alpha. Of what? Now of the solute within solvent A and solvent B respectively and this is now the distribution coefficient KD isn't it okay so this is the expression for situation 2 okay and now situation 3 if it dissociates dissociates into n number of species so let's let's consider that the species is X prime okay and it is dissociated into n number of species the most probable situation is it actually dissociates into two species three or four is very uncommon okay so what is the concentration of the undissociated form of x now it is cb into one minus alpha as usual if alpha is the degree of dissociation and since each species when dissociates it produces n number of species so n should be multiplied so n alpha cb should be a concentration of the dissociated form okay now we have uh, we have nothing to do with this dissociated uh, this constant concentration in case of kd but this concentration is important if we uh, uh, if the equilibrium con constant is uh, into taken into consideration because the equilibrium constant kc has the expression what now the concentration of the product over the concentration of the reactant if there is a coefficient n then it goes to the power isn't it so alpha cb is the concentration and it has some coefficient n then alpha cb to the power n should be the numerator in the expression of equilibrium constant which is also known as the chemical equilibrium okay so 
kc should have the expression kc is the chemical equilibrium or equilibrium constant it should have the expression alpha cb whole to the power n over cb into 1 minus alpha now let us rearrange this equation just cross multiplication this right hand side denominator should go to the left hand side and the left hand side should go to the denominator of the right hand side so we have the expression cb into 1 minus alpha this one which is c alpha into cb whole to the power n over kc now we have the expression of kd we have already taken into consideration kd as the concentration of the uh, solute in the in in the both the phases okay and in the phase one phase a it is as usual but in phase b it is the undissociated form so it is ca over cb into 1 minus alpha now we have the expression of cb into 1 minus alpha in terms of kc which is what now the expression is this one okay so let us put the value of kc of cb into 1 minus alpha not kc from here to here so here in the numerator it was alpha into cb whole to the power n so alpha into cb whole to the power n go, it goes to the denominator okay and here in the numerator what was there i am sorry in the denominator what was there it was kc so it will be over alpha cb whole to the power in here that means it will go to the numerator now in this equation so what is the expression of kd now the expression of kd is ca into kc over alpha into cb whole to the power n okay therefore we have the expression ca over cb to the power n after having rearranged this equation this expression should be in the right hand side kd into alpha to the power n by kc this is yet another constant which is let us write as kd prime okay now you can find out this value of kd how now take the log in both sides and we are, we get an equation like this log ca equals to log kd plus uh, log n log cb because th this will go here in the right hand side then it multiplies and if you take the logarithm this multiplication sign will be replaced by the plus sign okay and this way you have got this equation so we have log c a equals to log kd prime plus n log cb and plot up log c a versus log cb in the x-axis you are plotting log cb and in the y-axis you are plotting log c a then you will get in uh, get a straight line which will uh, which will definitely not pass through the origin but it will intercept uh, intersect the y-axis and the intercept that will be ob obtained will be log kd prime here in this point this is the intercept y equal to mx plus c so this is the value of c isn't it this is the intercept and what should be the slope slope should be the coefficient of x that is actually n so n is the slope okay now let us consider the association case in case of association, consider solute X which dissolves in solvent A without any change. So there is no change in solvent A. Solution A is okay. But in solvent B, what happens? Their association takes place. As for example, let's cite the example of acetic acid. It forms always a dimer. Okay. So it should be uh, C C H three C W O H whole to the power. I am, it is not power. It is uh, uh, twice. Okay. Whole twice. So it forms a dimer. Likewise, this uh, it is X n. This species where n is the number of molecules that combines. In our example, this value of n was usually two. Okay, and this is usually two always. Three is less probable. Anyway, let us assume that C A and C B are the concentrations of the solute in solvents A and B respectively. This C B is definitely overall overall concentration. Okay, now alpha as usual the degree of association now until now it was till now it was degree of dissociation now but now this is degree of considered to be degree of association so in that case the association equation can be presented this way nx reversible sign x here in the suffix n okay and the concentration, the concentration of the undissociated form of B, uh, undissociated form of X within B, this is CB into 1 minus alpha, because alpha portion have got associated. Now each molecule that gets associated uh, into n number of species, 
that means n number of species getting associated so how many species are produced that should be alpha by n suppose there are 10 molecules getting associated so how many species should be formed there should be 10 by 2 that is 5 number of species should be obtained isn't it 10 number of acetic acid forms 5 number of dimers likewise this this alpha if div is divided by n then the exact number of associated number of molecules should be obtained so cb is multiplied with the associated number of the uh, molecules actually the mole fractions okay the mole fraction divided by the number of molecules that that are getting associated so this is the concentration of the associated species species the equilibrium constant case as usual the concentration of the product over the concentration of the reactant the concentration of the product is cb into alpha by n and that of the reactant is cb into 1 minus alpha but since n is the coefficient with that so it should go to the power now uh, rearranging this equation cb into 1 minus alpha over to the power n should be equal to cb into alpha by n over kc now eliminating this power so this will go uh, here as this reciprocate reciprocated power that is 1 by n so we have got the final expression of cb into 1 minus alpha as alpha cb over n kc whole to the power 1 by n and let us put this value in the expression of kd what was the expression of kd there now the expression of kd was ca over cb into 1 minus alpha so here you put this value okay and we got the final expression this one okay so you just uh, have a look very carefully and you will understand this thing okay now at constant temperature what alpha and kc are constants isn't it and kd must be some constant into ca by cb into 1 by n 1 by n so this is yet another constant and denoted as kd dash and look at this equation after having taken the logarithm in both sides the difference with the previous one of the case where association was taking place is just here is 1 by n instead of n all the other things are same so in this mm, graphical presentation all the things are same instead here the slope is 1 by n instead of n no problem so plot of log ca versus log cb gives a straight line with slope equals to 1 by n and intercept log kd prime thus the values of n and kd prime can be calculated so that's all for this lecture lecture number nine thank you have a nice day